So, what is the difference between a restaurant fish and chips and a chip shop fish and chips? Well, today I'm going to find out because I'm going to be trying both to see who's best. So, let's start off first with the restaurant. So, the restaurant I decided to go to is called Giraffe. The reason is it's your typical high street chain restaurant that serves fish and chips. They have many locations around the UK and is a mid range priced eatery. This one is located in the Trinity Shopping Centre in Leeds and is quite a nice one. Let's head in. It's a moderately sized place, decorated really well I have to say. It's got a cosy yet modern chic look to it, with the open kitchen and exposed bar area. There's plenty of seating throughout, but I chose a little spot by the window in the middle so I could admire these amazing looking lampshades. Check these out. And the colourful wooden wall mosaic. The menu is a decent size with a variety of dishes on offer, such as all day brunch, katsu curry and burgers to name a few. So a pretty wide range of offerings. But I'm only here for the cod and chips right there plus a cup of tea which came in this really nice red teapot cup and milk jug set. The cup was rather small though and kind of seemed like a coffee cup but either way you could get two cups from it which tasted pretty good. Right so here is the restaurant fish and chips. Let's have a closer look at what you get. You get a pot of tartar sauce a caramelised lemon, which is unusual. I've never had that before, so I'll have to test it out to see how it tastes. A pretty good sized piece of fish, which, as it says on the menu, is cod. And it has some pretty interesting garnish on top. I think it might be some sort of cress. A portion of chips that are under the fish. A pot of curry sauce. And a portion of mushy peas on the side. Let's dig in. I'm going to start off with the caramelised lemon. As I said, I've never had one of these before on any dish, let alone a fish and chips. So I wonder how this is different from a normal lemon. Let's squeeze it all over the fish, chips and mushy peas. Now everything has already been pre-seasoned with salt from the kitchen, so I just need to put on the lemon. Okay, so I'm going to start off with one of the chips. In fact, I think I would call these fries rather than chips. I would call the thicker ones chips and these thinner ones fries. It's got the skin on, looks crispy. Let's try it out. Really tasty. They've got a nice crisp and crunch on the outside. It's got a good seasoning of salt. The caramelized lemon kind of just seems like a normal lemon. It's soft on the inside with a good potatoey flavour. Good fries. I think we need to try them out with the tartar sauce. Now you get to choose your sauces here. So they have tartar, curry sauce and gravy. Let's try out the tartar. Nice. The sauce adds a sour tang that complements the chip well. But the tartar seems just like the sachet kind and not the fresh kind which is a little disappointing. I think it needs to be a bit more creamy. Let's try out the curry sauce next. It covers the whole chip. The colour is on the lighter side. Let's give it a try and see what it's like. It's pretty good. It's more of a sweet curry sauce with a slight kick to it. Kind of like a katsu curry sauce. It's got a pretty thin consistency. A bit too thin for me, I think. I would have preferred it a bit thicker, but the taste is not bad. Let's move on to the mushy peas. It's not the biggest portion, but it's really thick and dense. I like the colour of it, and you can still see some whole peas in there along with the mashed. Let's taste it. It's good. You get a nice pea flavour and because it's a thick texture, you get a good chew to it as well. 
Right, I think it's time for the fish. It's a good size one, like I mentioned. The batter looks good. I'm not so sure about the garnish on top. I don't think it needs it. Let's take it off. And then let's cut it in half and see the fish in the middle. So here is the lovely bit of cod in the middle. It's not the thickest, but I suppose it is about average these days. It's already flaking away and I like the white colour of it. The batter seems a good thickness too. Let's cut off a piece to try out. I've got a bit of the batter. I've got a bit of the fish. It looks really good and I can't wait to taste it. So let's do it. Really nice. The batter has a slight crisp to it. It's seasoned well with the salt and lemon, so you get those flavours coming through. The cod on the inside has a subtle, delicate flavour. It's really soft and breaks away in your mouth with hardly any chew. It's a nice bit of fish. I just want to try out the cod on its own, as it seems that it's getting more rare to have cod now. Most of the places I go to, the fish has been either haddock or other types of white fish. This is a good piece that I've got here. Let's eat it. Delicious. Let's try out the batter on its own, as a good batter can really make fish and chips. It comes already seasoned, so you just have to add the caramelised lemon to it. Let's eat it. A good batter. Right, I think it's time for some combo bites. I've got the chips, I've got the fish, and I've got the mushy peas. So this should be a good bite. Let's go for it. Delicious. And we have to do the next one in the tartar sauce. Even though I think this is the sachet kind rather than the freshly made ones, I think it will still add a nice sour tang. Let's eat it. Really nice again. The creamy sour tank really complements the fried flavour of the fish and chips here. Last but not least, we have to try it out with the curry sauce. This one is quite a bit different to the usual chip shop kind. Let's see if it works. It does indeed. Even though it's quite sweet, it still has a kick to it that adds to the flavour of the fish and chips. So this was a really nice fish and chips all in all. The flavours of all the different items and sauces complemented each other well. You get a good choice of sauces too which is good as usually with restaurants you only get to choose tartar sauce. What a nice fish and chips that was. So the total cost of that meal was £17.30. Let's move on next to the chip shop. So the chip shop I decided to go to is called Gravely's. Now I've actually been here before, but not for the fish and chips. I came here for their breakfast. And you did hear that right, I said breakfast. They're probably the only fish and chip place that does one and I really enjoyed it, which is why I decided to come back and try out their fish and chips. Let's go order. The menu is displayed above the counter with all the food options available. I ordered the same items as the restaurant to try and keep it a similar meal for comparison. I even got a cup of tea which came in their nice branded cup and it was a good tea. Ok so here is the fish and chips I ordered and what a great meal it looks to be. Let's dig in. The first thing you have to do though with any fish and chip meal is add the salt and vinegar and a generous helping of them too as I don't think you can ever add too much. I'm going to start off with one of the chips. Now these are the classic chip shop chips. Big and thick. There's probably a potato and a half worth in this portion. Let's try it out. Really nice. The outside has a slight crisp that gives a good bite and chew. The inside has a soft and fluffy texture with a good potato flavour. And because it's a big chip, it gives a nice substantial amount of potato in one bite. It's a good chip. 
we have to move on next and try it out with the sauces. I'm going to start with the tartar sauce. It's a Heinz one you get here and it comes in this little packet. So I think it should be similar to the restaurant one. Let's squeeze it out onto the plate and see what it's like. It actually looks pretty good and more like a fresh version rather than a packet version. I've dipped a chip into it. I like the creamy white colour. Let's try it out. Really good. When I first got the packet, I was a bit sceptical, but after tasting it, I like it. It's got a creamy sour tang, and because of that, works perfectly well with the oily fried chip. It's a good sauce. Let's move on to the mushy peas. It's a good texture, not too thick or thin. You can see some whole peas in there. I like the colour of it too. Sometimes they can be a bit too artificially green, but this one is not. Let's see how it tastes. Delicious. That's surprisingly really good. You get the usual pea flavour, but there's something different about this one. I'm not sure if it's got vinegar in there or something else, but it tastes better than usual mushy peas I've had recently. You need to get this when you come here. In fact, I just have to try it out with one of the chips. The texture is perfect for making it coat and stick to the chip. I can't wait to see what this is going to taste like. So let's just go for it. Delicious. The mushy peas has a kind of, I think, sweet vinegary tang to it that makes it a more rounded flavour. And it goes so well with the oily fried chip. I can't wait to try it out with the fish. Let's move on to the curry sauce in the meantime. I'm going to try it out with a chip, as that's how you get the most enjoyment out of it. It's coated the chip perfectly. Let's give it a try. Nice. It's a decent curry sauce. It's got a subtle curry flavour and not really any spice. I think it could do with a bit more of both of these things to lift it up to a great curry sauce. Right, I think it's time for the fish. And what a big piece this one is. It almost takes up the whole plate. The batter's a nice golden brown colour and looks really crispy. They told me it's haddock they serve here and I cannot wait to try it. So let's do it. I'm going to cut it in half first just to see what it's like in the middle and take a look at the actual fish inside. And there it is. It's a nice white colour, it does look a little thin, but then again, it's a wide piece, so it balances out. Let's cut off a piece to try out. I've got a bit of the batter, I've got a bit of the fish, it smells incredible from the vinegar and batter, and just makes your mouth water looking at it. Let's eat it. Amazing! The batter is light and crispy, the salt and vinegar flavour really comes through, and the more you put on, the better. The fish in the middle is soft and succulent, it just flakes away in your mouth as you bite. The batter keeps it nice and moist, not dry at all. I just have to try out a piece of the fish on its own to get the flavour of it. The colour is great, and it holds nicely on the fork too, so you can get a big bite of it without it falling apart. Let's eat it. Delicious. The haddock flavour is really tasty and I think more flavoursome than cod. It's a good fish. Let's take a bite with just the batter on its own. I like the colour as mentioned. It's not too thick or thin, the perfect size. They fry the fish in beef dripping here and I think you can really taste the difference as it has so much more flavour. Let's do it. Incredible. Okay, I think it's time for some combo bites. I've got the chips, the lovely haddock with that crispy batter, and the mushy peas. Let's go for a bite of this. Really tasty. And I just have to try it out with the tartar sauce. It's just going to add that creamy sour tang to cut through the oily fried fish and chips. Here it goes. 
delicious. And we may as well try it with the curry sauce too, but this time it's going to add a subtle curry flavour. Let's do it. Fantastic. By far my favourite thing here is the fish and it just goes so well with everything that I just had to go straight in with my hands with the sauces. And then straight into the curry sauce too. Doesn't that look amazing? This was a great meal. I'm surprised how big the fish was. It's a great portion and had the taste to match. I can't fault it. The only thing I would say that could be improved is the curry sauce. But apart from that, really good. What a great fish and chips that was. The mushy peas was surprisingly really good. So the total cost of that meal was 14 pounds and 40 pence. So which was the better fish and chips? Comment down below which one you preferred. For me, there's only one winner and that's the chip shop fish and chips. I don't think a restaurant version can ever beat a chip shop version. It's so much better at the chip shop, so they take it for me. It does beg the question though, why don't restaurants serve chip shop fish and chips? Is it because of the recipe, the big fryers that the chip shops have? I'm not too sure. Comment down below if you know. Okay, if you like this video, click on the thumbs up icon below and click on subscribe to come along for the next food journey and I'll see you in the next one.